Freshwater mussels can live to be 80 to 100 years old. Very, very different from marine species like mussels and oysters that live in bays and estuaries, which have very short life cycles. Freshwater mussels can be very, very old. They can be like old growth trees in forests. And what's another really intriguing element of their life cycle is that they reproduce by producing larvae or baby mussels that actually attach the fish to hitch a ride and they need to have that attachment phase with their baby to, so that they can metamorphose into what look like small juvenile mussels. Without hitching a ride on the fish, there is no completion of their life cycle. And so if that's important for a longest species in, in a river, if they have to have these fish, and in many cases it's one particular species of fish, for a particular species of freshwater mussel. If that fish becomes impaired due to dams that block their movement or water quality issues, then you short circuit the life cycle of freshwater mussel. So one of the reasons why mussels have been in such a steep decline locally and across the nation is the fact that we have so many dams on our waterways. Because these animals do need these fish to be able to swim up and down the rivers freely, so that baby mussels can hitch a ride and then disperse into places far and wide. Whenever you have dams that block the free movement of fish or even slow them up to a degree, over time you have a collective impact on mussel reproduction. Another important facet is declining water quality and habitat quality. Particularly in urban corridors, you tend to see a loss of these species before the loss of other types of animals and plants. Filter feeders are very sensitive to many types of toxic contaminants and poor water quality. And so over time, that can have an effect. And even in streams where you have good water quality, generally, but you might every 50 years have an oil spill or something else which briefly degrades water quality. If you hit the mussels hard in just a quick period of time, because of dams and their long life cycle, it takes them a long time, if ever, for them to be able to redisperse into that stream and rebuild themselves. They're slow growing, so they cannot recover quickly once they're impacted. One thing we'd like to point out is that there are other types of bivalves that live in our streams that many people mistake for freshwater mussels. And generally what is being commonly reported to us as freshwater mussels, they are not freshwater mussels, and in fact, they're a non-native species that was introduced into this area in the 1970s. These are called corbicula or Asian clams and they tend to be small relative to the size of a good freshwater mussel, about the size of your thumbnail or smaller. They are very round in shape and they have these very heavy ribs on them that are very distinct. So when you see those small round whitish clam shells, those are not freshwater mussels. Yeah, many people do not know this, but uh, it's an intriguing fact. The most imperiled of all plants and animals in North America are freshwater mussels of the family Unionidae. And there's about 300 species of freshwater mussels native to North America. That's more than anywhere else in the world. And unfortunately, more than 75% are imperiled at some level. And more importantly, even than the loss of species in many cases, is the fact that we're losing large numbers of even common species. This species, Elliptia consonata, is regarded as the most common mussel species out of the dozen or so that are native to the Delaware water basin. But this species is only common in a few areas in a few streams. It's very hard to find. When you do find them, they're usually old animals not reproducing. And so even the common species of freshwater mussels need to be protected and understood better why we're losing these numbers of mussels as well as species of mussels. There are many reasons why folks should care about freshwater mussels besides the fact that they're declining in their species numbers for intrinsic reasons. We should care about them for other reasons. And those other reasons, the most important of which are clean water benefits provided by freshwater mussels. Each individual freshwater mussel can filter several gallons of water every day, even more so during the summertime, the warmer times of the year. And when you have a bed of thousands or even millions of mussels in a river 
within just a one mile reach of river, collectively they're filtering millions of gallons of water. They filter those particles out, removing nutrients, removing suspended matter that blocks light for plants and other organisms. And if you were to try to reproduce that benefit with waste treatment plants or Brita filters, it would be astronomical in terms of the cost. So for clean water, first and foremost, we should care about them. A second important reason we should care about them is they also help the other ecology, the other plants and animals in the streams. Dense beds of mussels provide these microhabitat niches that are important for fish and other animals and plants that live on the bottom. They enrich the bottom of the streams. There are also some leading research suggesting that freshwater mussels might be important for cancer research because to date no one has actually seen any kind of malignancy in the cell tissue of freshwater mussels. So we might be able to learn about cancer research for people by looking at why freshwater mussels do not get cancer. Most importantly, freshwater mussels tell us about our system, how healthy we're doing. If you have dense beds of mussels and several species and young and old mussels, that's a healthy bed of freshwater mussels. Please don't eat freshwater mussels. They are not generally eaten. Like many things that live in freshwater streams, they harbor a vast array of parasites that are bad for your health. And even Native Americans would rarely eat freshwater mussels. They would only eat them in severe times of food shortages. They were like the food of last resort for Aboriginal tribes of North America. So if you like mussels that you eat in a restaurant, stick with the marine species, which are generally called blue mussels or oysters. Do not try to eat freshwater mussels. Not only are we trying to protect them, but it would be bad for your health. We would love to get the public's help in our freshwater mussel recovery program. Around the country, there are some groups involved with freshwater mussel restoration for the purpose of putting rare species back, restoring endangered species, and we are interested in that too. But our main goal is to bring back clean water across the Delaware River Basin, particularly streams in the Delaware Estuary Watershed. And so we have a multi-pronged sort of program where we have hatchery production efforts underway, some of the first in the nation. We have studies underway to bring mussels from good beds into streams where mussels haven't been seen for a hundred years. We have tagging studies and various types of events we like to do with the public. Also, we're looking for direct help in the streams. There are going to be opportunities to help tend mussel beds in your stream in your backyard. We can put cages of mussels in your stream to see whether it's suitable for restoration with larger numbers of mussels. And we're looking for mussel beds that might still be in existence that we don't really know about. So if you think you have freshwater mussels in your streams and can take a picture of one of those shells and email it to us and provide some information about where you obtained it, then we can go back out to that site and confirm that it is in fact a good population and give you more information about that.